everyone, this is Chad from Good Crib Tutorial. Today I want to teach you a pretty fun technique using a few simple steps to create a double exposure effect. Probably seen this in a couple different materials, promotional materials, for example this band um, Young the Giant. This is not a paid placement, anything like that. They are coming out with a new album, but I just saw this on their limited lithograph. Also the f cover of their uh, album has a similar effect. Basically you have a photo, portrait, and then you have kind of a landscape, and the landscape shows through. And then in their example, they actually masked out um, part of the portrait and the uh, background as well. So we're going to do something similar using some masking and layer blending modes uh, to create some, kind of a similar effect I did pretty quickly. So go ahead and open up a portrait that has a pretty clear background that's delineated from the foreground here, subject. So I have two photos from iStock Photo. And so you want to click and drag using the move tool, uh, one on top of the other, uh, or you can just select it all. So if you have, you know, the marquee selection tool, you can s click and drag around it all, or you can just press uh, Control A or on the Mac Command A, and then Control C or Command C or copies, and then go to the file of the portrait, and we'll do Control V or Command V. I paste it in. Make sure you have show transform controls up at the top. And I'm just going to move it uh, over the portrait here. I know usually when you make uh, something a little bit larger, it's going to pixelate, but this won't be too bad. All right, so just so it covers up. If you're not sure, uh, go ahead and change the opacity on the layer uh, palette here down a little bit, and then you can see what air is going to show through like that. All right, so I'm going to. Bring this, we're going to crop this a little bit, but something like that. All right, then press enter to apply that resize and choose the crop tool. And I'm just going to crop something like this. All right, so let's go ahead and bring that up to 100% again. That doesn't really matter. Hit the eye icon to turn off the visibility of the top layer. This background layer, let's go ahead and make it a normal layer. You can click and drag that lock down to the trash or just double click the layer. Just click OK. It'll name it layer zero so we can actually mask out some pixels. Otherwise, it would just add a background color if we deleted some pixels or, or whatever. So go ahead and uh, we need to cut the subject out. There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can paint a selection on. You can use the magic wand tool if you just click hold down shift and click again it should do a pretty good job however as you can see it's missing a little bit so i have a couple tutorials on that but for the purposes of this tutorial i'm just going to hold shift to add to that selection and just do a quick selection because it doesn't really matter too much with this for the look that we're going so uh, i'm just going to hold down shift and click and let go click and let go and the more often you click you can create more of a curve around the edge instead of just straight lines all right, something like that. And so we're here. Bring this up here. And that's already selected, so I can go in a little bit. All right. So we have this area around her selected. And, you know, if you're a beginner Photoshop, you could go to the eraser tool and just erase, or you could hit delete. Um, I've done that in some of my tutorials when I didn't feel like masking, but this is actually a better technique. I'm going to show you uh, how to mask out the background because then you can bring in pixels if you, instead of erasing, and then it's more destructive. So go ahead and go to Select Inverse, and now she's just selected, right? Then click the Add uh, Layer Mask at the bottom of the Layers panel, and as you can see, it masks out area behind her. It's a little bit of a rough edge, so if you press Control Z or Command Z and undo, what you can do if yours looks like that is if you click Refine Edge or just go to Select, Modify, Feather, or Refine Edge, and a couple of things you might want to do. You can adjust the radius a little bit. Um, I'm going to just gonna add a, a slight feather. All right. You can also um, do a couple other things like paint in some of the selection like that if you think it's too much. Uh, just the edges just so it's more not as obvious side there. But anyway, uh, but definitely set a feather because what's that's going to do? It's going to feather the edge. It's not a definite 
kind of hard contrasty edge. All right, I'm gonna just slightly paint in down here a little bit. All right, so that's using the tool there. You can shift the edge left or right if you want to, but for this one, I'm just gonna mainly use that a little bit, mostly do the feather. All right, I have 2.1 pixels, that should be fine. And click OK. Then add your layer mask, and it's a little bit nicer edge. Now the cool thing about masking instead of erasing is we can zoom in and notice on the edge right here, see how that's not quite right when you erase some of that. So choose a soft edge brush, make sure hardness is up to 0%, and what you can do, press the left or right bracket to resize uh, while we're out here. And we make sure your foreground color is set to black, right? Then just click and drag on the edge here, and that will mask out just that edge. So, because I got a little bit of the background in there. All right. So, I'm not going to spend the whole time doing that, but you can do that. And um, if you erase too much, you can set the foreground color to white. I just flipped them there using that arrow. And I'll just show you, I'll undo it. But if I click and drag over that, see, it brings the background through again. All right. I'm going to control Z to undo that just to show you what it does. Uh, likewise, if I painted black in like heavily here, then it masks out. All right. So we have her selected and she's, and what you want to do is do the same thing to the, the area up here. Now we could go, you know, if you control click that, that's not going to work because that'll select all the pixels. All right. Sometimes you can, if just the pixels here were showing, you can control clicker. This is a little shortcut, and a lot of Adobe programs, uh, you know, Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, you can actually press Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and just click and drag, and that'll duplicate things like shapes and Illustrator, for example. Well, in Photoshop, you can actually Alt or Option click and drag this mask from this layer onto that layer. And now, if you look up at this, now we have uh, masked out in the same area. All right, with the other one. So there's a, a couple more steps. All you got to do is click and drag so that the portrait is on the top. All right, and then the landscape photo is on the bottom. And then with the top layer selected, make sure you got the top layer selected. Go ahead and change that to a different layer blending mode. You could try lighten, and that has a specific unique effect like that. And again, if you want a background like the, the example I showed from the band has a white background, so you can just set the foreground color to white, create a new layer, and drag it to the bottom, and just press Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac. And then you got a white background just to show you for the effect. But anyway, so the top layer is lightened, um, but you can also try overlay. I mean, that might be pretty good as well. And you can also adjust the opacity. So if you think it's too strong, you can bring the opacity over. And then if you, you can bring the opacity over on the bottom one as well. Now on the example that I showed, um, the top part was a little bit masked out as well. So I'm going to change this instead of the overlay. I think for, for this example, the light works a little bit better, but we still need to mask out some of the edge because they had a slight little fade out around the edges. So set the foreground color to black, choose a nice soft edge brush, and make sure you're on not on the actual layer like right here because then it'll just paint uh, it'll just paint black in. So make sure you're on that mask. All right, and then we just want to erase a little bit at the top. Now what that is doing is it's just showing through to the bottom layer. So you need to do the same exact thing on the layer below that, and then it actually starts to add kind of a soft edge there, kind of like in that example I showed. This is just an extra step if you wanted to do that. Um, for a more kind of a fade in look. All right. But again, maybe lighten, depending on the photo you're using, might not work as well as, say, overlay. So that's how you do a double exposure effect. Uh, feel free to comment in the YouTube or Facebook uh, page if you want to link to some examples that you've done so we can critique. Um, follow us on Facebook. All the links are on our uh, YouTube profile, youtube.com good uh, creative tutorial. 
And be sure to subscribe. I have a couple more uh, Photoshop tutorials coming up that are pretty fun and fun ways to learn different ways to create the same effect that you see out there in advertisements and promotional materials. So uh, follow us on Twitter as well, but be sure to subscribe on YouTube and stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.